Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 56 to 60. So first, I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 56, we're asked which of the following accurately depicts the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So we want to know the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So the main difference between these two is that gram-positive bacteria has a lot more peptidoglycan, even though they both have peptidoglycan in their cell wall. But uh, gram-negative bacteria actually have two parts to their cell wall. So there's an inner membrane and an outer membrane. Option A is saying one has a capsule and one does not. So the capsule, the outermost covering on the bacteria, this can be present in both gram positive and negative cells or bacteria. So therefore that's not really a difference between them. Option B is saying one has two plasma membranes and one only has one. That's correct. So the negative one has two plasma membranes, the inner and outer, whereas the other one just has one main membrane. So that's our correct answer. Option C is saying one has peptidoglycan in the cell envelope and one does not, that's incorrect. Both of them actually have it present, but to different amounts. So that's not a correct difference. And option D is saying one has a significant number of striations in the cellular mem membrane and one does not. No, this isn't really a thing. That's clearly a difference between gram positive and negative bacteria. It's kind of irrelevant. So no, this is not a correct answer. In question 57, we're asked how many of the following modifications take place in post-transcription pre-mRNA transcripts within the nucleus. So when we have a pre-mRNA transcript in the nucleus, what are the modifications that take place? So the key modifications that take place are, well, let's go through them. Option one is saying cleavage of mRNA into smaller transcripts. No, that is not something that happens. We don't cleave it into smaller transcripts. We do modify the mRNA in a certain way by removing certain things which are not necessary for the final product but and keeping others and then we cut them out at specific points but it's not that we randomly cleave the mRNA into smaller transcripts. This is much more controlled and that process is called splicing. So option two is correct. We splice the mRNA, we keep the exons, we remove the introns, the introns stay inside the nucleus and the exons exit the nucleus. So yes, this is an actual mod modification that happens to pre-mRNA before it's mature. Option three is saying glycosylation of various methionine amino acids. No, this is incorrect because first of all, glycosylation, it doesn't really happen to RNA transcripts. And then secondly, it's talking about methionine amino acids. Like how are we already talking about amino acids? We're still talking about RNA inside the nucleus it's only when it goes outside of the nucleus that it's translated into any type of protein with amino acids, but like that all takes place outside of the nucleus. So this is not something that's going to happen. And option four are, and five are correct. We do attach a poly A tail and then we attach a five prime cap. These are two very important modifications to pre mRNA. So you should definitely recognize these guys, these modifications. So three of the five options were correct. So D is our correct answer here. In question 58, we're asked where glycosylation occurs. So it occurs in the blank. So glycolysis, right? This is the breakdown of glucose. Where does it occur? You should know this very well for the biochemistry section. You should know that glycolysis takes place in the cytosol. So it's important to know all these anabolic and catabolic processes and where they take place because it's very easy for the MCAT. It's a it's an easy topic for them to kind of quiz you on. And you should be able to pick up that, hey, that process like doesn't take place in this part of the cell so like they're trying to trick me and that's an incorrect answer and I can find the correct answer this way so just very important knowledge to have where in the cell different anabolic and catabolic processes take place glycolysis in the cytosol not in the nucleus in the mitochondria we have the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain and gluconeogenesis, for that one, we can say it occurs in both the cytosol and mitochondria, but glycolysis specifically is cytosol only. 
In question 59, it says a step in the lab procedure for a protein analysis involves placing cytoplasmic protein in a hydrocarbon. So we're talking about a hydrocarbon type solvent. Which of the following would most likely not happen next? So we took a cytoplasmic protein, put it into a hydrophobic environment. What would not happen now? So some of these things are going to, or most of them are going to happen. One is not. So what happens for a protein in the cytoplasm is that it's surrounded by an aqueous environment. And so things that are polar, so side chains that are polar, are going to come to the outside when this protein folds and interact with the environment, which is the cytoplasm. And that's going to be favorable. But anything that's hydrophobic because of the hydrophobic effect, those side chains are going to be pushed into, into the interior of this folded protein. So they're on the inside. And this is to minimize interactions of hydrophobic species with the aqueous environment and maximize polar residues, their interaction with the aqueous environment. However, when we put into hydrocarbon, we have now flipped what's going on. So the protein is going to change its conformation. It's not going to just simply denature, but it's kind of going to flip inside out. Now those hydrophobic residues that were on the inside, they have a more positive interaction with the solvent. So they're going to come on the outside and the polar residues are going to actually go and be hidden on the inside of the folded protein. So that's what's going to happen. Option A is saying the protein would fold itself into a different conformation. Yes, this is something that would happen. Option B is saying the protein would retain the conformation it had prior to entering the hydrocarbon solution. No, this is something which would not happen. There's no way that the protein would definitely like retain its entire conformation. It's going to change in a pretty significant way. Option C is saying the polar side groups would orient themselves away from the hydrocarbon. This is correct. They would fold inwards toward towards the inside of the protein and not try to interact with the solvent. And option D is saying the nonpolar side groups would interact with the hydrocarbon molecules via van der Waals interactions. Yes, this is something that would happen. The the nonpolar side groups would come out and be exposed to the solvent, and they have these favorable van der Waals interactions. Option 60 is saying an unknown enzyme is isolated from human saliva after heating it to 150 degrees Celsius. Which of the following is its most likely fate? So we took an enzyme and then we heated it to 150 degrees Celsius. What happens when you when you like increase the temperature of any protein to a very high temperature that's far removed from where it's normally operating? We're talking about human saliva, meaning it operates at room temperature, or sorry, sorry, body temperature, not room temperature, which is around 37 degrees Celsius. So at 150 degrees Celsius, this protein is not really meant for that temperature. Therefore, what's going to happen is it's going to denature. So it's not desaturation or saturation that is related to an enzyme actually having its substrate bound to the active site. But that's not what's going on here. We're just talking about a type of protein and changing the temperature. And D is incorrect. It's definitely not going to be folded because this temperature is way too high and it's going to cause the protein to unfold. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this and go through all the different answer options, explaining why each one is correct or incorrect so that you have the right logic for the MCAT. Other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel and stay up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.